When a Star Destroyer is overkill and your Nebulon Bs keep getting stolen, go with the Escort Frigate. What's up Meta Nerds, today's video is all about the Imperial Escort Frigate, also known as the Escort Carrier. The Escort Carrier was used exclusively by a specialist branch of the Imperial Navy, known only to a few as the Imperial Storm Commandos. Whatever they are, they're launching ties! Imperial Escort Carriers! Imperial what? They're not part of the regular Imperial Navy. They're exclusive to the Imperial Storm Commandos. A lot of the details have been kept in Imperial secret, but there are some really interesting details we know about this ship. Based on its appearance compared to Rebel Snubfighters, it looks to be about 150 meters or 492 feet long, about the same as a Rebel Blockade Runner. Its height is around 41 meters or 134 feet, making it about 1 12th the height of the Imperial Star Destroyer. And at a width of 71 meters or 233 feet, it was a little less than twice as wide as the CR-90. If it showed up here on Earth, it would be about as long as 16 and a half school buses, or half the length of the Nimitz class while being nearly twice as wide, and be about as tall as a 13-story building. Compared to some other frigates, you might think this thing is relatively small, but it packed some amazing firepower. Right up top were a pair of single-barreled cannons, which based on their power output must have been some heavy turbo lasers, as we see them easily blow apart this GR-75. On the ventral side protecting the hangars are two double-barreled weapons, though their power output is unknown. While at the very tip of the bow we see these additional two turrets, which were most likely medium turbo lasers, or could fire ion shots to make a 1-2 combo with those bigger turbo lasers up top. And all this firepower actually had some rebel pilots refer to this thing as a gunship. Looks like some sort of gunship, rebel scum. All of these weapons made the escort carrier great for taking on smaller rebel capital ships or escort vessels, like the CR-90 and Hammerhead Corvette. But its lack of point defense lasers left much to be desired when it came to fending off rebel fighters. Again, because of the secretive nature of the Imperial Escort Carriers and the Storm Commandos that operated them, we don't know this ship's top speed in space or in atmosphere. But we can imagine that these three vertically arranged sublight engines must have been somewhat quick, as the Storm Commandos were often tasked with secret missions sabotaging the plans of Rebel Scum. And Rebel accounts do tell us that it's slightly slower than your average X-Wing, while also commenting that it had decent speed for its size and was able to pull off some impressive turns and maneuvers. Now it's time for the carrier part. The midsection of this ship is one big hangar bay, which would often be full of TIE fighters and TIE bombers, along with the Storm Commando's preferred TIE hunters. The total amount of TIEs that could fit inside of this thing is unknown, with accounts ranging from 8 fighters to 72, which would be an entire Starfighter wing. The heavy firepower, decent speed and maneuverability, along with a large complement of fighters was perfect for the Storm Commandos, as they were most known for kidnapping Rebel crews, taking any escorts out with its laser cannons, and then sending a boarding party over on the fighters, picking up VIPs like rebel leaders or even their scientists. Whoever that was, it looks like he's escaped with our scientists. And when you wanted more stealth instead of just a smash and grab job, it took advantage of the fact that the TIE Hunters were one of the few TIE variants to come with a hyperdrive, and thus could follow the escort carrier into battle on its own, or use the carrier as a rendezvous point, traversing much of the distance in the carrier, and then making a short hyperspace jump to its final target. So that's it for its stats and breakdown, but you definitely want to hear these cool facts and behind the scenes stuff. The Imperial Escort Carrier was most prominently featured in the video game Star Wars Rogue Squadron 3 Rebel Strike. Rogue Squadron encounters the Escort Carriers on several locations, including the Rings of Geonosis, and at the Imperial Shipyards at Fondor. Captain Sarkley, a Rebel pilot turned Imperial officer, commanded his own customized Escort Carrier as he rounded up scientists from across the galaxy to work on Imperial projects. His escort carrier would be destroyed by Wedge Antilles over Geonosis, and this ship has been officially brought back into canon via the novel Tarkin, where an Imperial escort carrier is mentioned in the pursuit of the Grand Moff's very own personal corvette, when Tarkin's Carrion Spike stealth ship was stolen by Rebels. So that's it for the Imperial escort carrier. If you want to connect with us on social media, find ways that you can help support this channel for free, or check out our Patreon and PayPal. Be sure to check out the links in the description. Special shout out to our supporters over on Patreon, but most important of all, remember, you gotta watch out for asteroids when flying close to Geonosis. And the Force will be with you. Always.